what if I told you that some of the most unassuming plants growing in American backyards right now contain compounds that have saved lives after venomous bites, accidental poisonings, and toxic exposures? These aren't exotic rainforest specimens. They're plants you can grow in your own garden. And the science backing their protective properties is absolutely fascinating. If you care about self-sufficiency, natural remedies, or just want to understand the incredible chemistry happening in your backyard, hit that subscribe button and tap the bell so you never miss an episode. Hey there, gardening friends. It's wonderful to have you here today. And if you're finding value in these deep dives, a quick, like, really helps this content reach more people. Let's start with something that might already be growing wild along your fence line. Jewelweed, also known as Touch Me Not, is a succulent-stemmed annual that thrives in damp, shady spots throughout most of the eastern United States. Those orange or yellow trumpet-shaped flowers are unmistakable in late summer, and the stems are so juicy they almost feel like they're filled with aloe gel. Here's what makes jewelweed remarkable. The sap from its crushed stems has been used for generations as an immediate treatment for poison ivy, poison oak, and stinging nettle exposure. Recent studies have shown that compounds in jewelweed sap, particularly lawson, can actually bind to urushiol, the oily resin in poison ivy that causes those miserable, blistering rashes. When applied within the first few minutes of contact, jewelweed sap can prevent the urushiol from penetrating your skin. Indigenous peoples across North America recognized this property centuries ago, and modern dermatological research is catching up. Growing jewelweed is almost effortless if you have a shady area with consistent moisture. It self-seeds prolifically, so once you establish a patch, it'll return year after year. Simply crush the stems and rub the sap directly on exposed skin after brushing against poison ivy, or make a strong infusion by simmering the stems and leaves, then freezing the liquid in ice cube trays for future use. Have you ever tried using jewelweed for poison ivy relief? Now let's talk about a plant whose genuine toxin neutralizing abilities are backed by compelling clinical evidence. Milk thistle, with its striking purple flowers and white-veined leaves, is a Mediterranean native that is naturalized across much of the United States, particularly in California and the warmer Southwest. The active compound in milk thistle seeds is called silymarine, a complex of flavonolignans that has been shown in numerous studies to protect liver cells from damage caused by toxins including some of the deadliest poisons known to humans. In Europe, salimarin extract is actually used in emergency rooms as a treatment for death cap mushroom poisoning, which is otherwise often fatal because the amatoxins destroy liver cells with ruthless efficiency. Silimarin works by stabilizing liver cell membranes and stimulating protein synthesis, essentially giving the liver a chance to regenerate while blocking toxins from entering the cells. For American gardeners, milk thistle is surprisingly easy to grow in well-drained soil in full sun. It's drought-tolerant once established, making it ideal for water-wise landscapes. To harvest the medicinal seeds, wait until the flower heads dry and turn brown, then cut them off and let them finish drying indoors. You can grind the seeds into powder and add them to smoothies or make a tincture. The leaves have sharp spines along the edges, so wear gloves when handling mature plants. Is liver health something you think about when planning your medicinal garden? Here's a plant that grows in nearly every climate zone across America, from Florida swamps to mountain meadows in Colorado. Plantain, and I'm talking about the low-growing broadleaf or narrow-leaf plantain that pops up in lawns, not the banana-like fruit, is one of those plants that people spray with herbicide without realizing they're killing a natural first aid kit. The leaves contain compounds like ocubin, allantoin, and tannins that have demonstrated antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, and wound healing properties. When it comes to toxins specifically, plantain has traditionally been used as a poultice for insect stings, spider bites, and even snake bites. The drawing action of the crushed leaves helps pull toxins out of the tissue while reducing inflammation and preventing infection. While plantain won't replace antivenom for serious snake bites, Studies have shown that the mucilage and bioactive compounds do have measurable effects on reducing localized swelling and speeding tissue repair. For bee stings, wasp stings, or spider bites, simply pick a few fresh leaves, crush them to release the juices, and apply the poultice directly to the sting. 
the relief can be surprisingly fast. Plantain thrives in compacted soil, which is why it does so well in lawns and footpaths. You don't need to cultivate it, just learn to recognize it and leave a patch growing somewhere accessible. Do you have plantain growing in your yard? Let's shift gears to something you might find surprising. Burdock root, that big-leafed biennial with the burrs that stick to everything, contains inulin and mucilage that can help bind and eliminate certain toxins from the digestive system. You'll find burdock growing wild across the northern states, anywhere with rich, deep soil and moderate moisture. Traditional herbalists have used burdock as a blood purifier for centuries, and modern research shows that burdock root does support the body's natural detoxification pathways, particularly in the liver and kidneys. The root contains compounds that increase bile production, which helps eliminate fat-soluble toxins, and it has mild diuretic properties that support kidney function. For gardeners interested in growing burdock, you need deep, loose soil because those tap roots can reach two feet down. Harvest the roots in fall of the first year or early spring of the second year before flowering. The roots are also edible with a sweet, earthy flavor. They're a staple in Japanese cuisine under the name gobo. One caution, if you let burdock go to seed, those burrs will spread everywhere. The Velcro fastener was actually inspired by burdock burrs, so you're growing a piece of innovation history. Have you ever harvested burdock root? Or do you mostly know it as that plant with the annoying sticky seeds? Here's where things get really interesting from a venom perspective. Echinacea, the purple coneflower that brightens up summer gardens across America, has immune-modulating properties that help the body respond to toxins and venoms. Native to the prairies and open woodlands of the central United States, Echinacea thrives in full sun and well-drained soil. The roots, leaves, and flowers all contain alchemides, polysaccharides, and caffeic acid derivatives that stimulate immune function. Some Native American tribes used Echinacea specifically for snake bites and insect stings, and research has shown that Echinacea can help reduce inflammation and support the body's defense mechanisms when dealing with venom exposure. German studies found that Echinacea extracts enhanced white blood cell activity, crucial for fighting infections that can follow venomous bites. Growing Echinacea is straightforward. It's drought-tolerant once established, attracts pollinators, and comes back reliably year after year. You can harvest the roots in fall after three or four years of growth, or use fresh or dried flowers and leaves for teas. The key is to use it at the first sign of exposure, not as a daily supplement. What's your experience with Echinacea? Do, do you grow it for beauty, for medicine, or both? Now, let me share something that might already be in your spice cabinet. Ginger, which grows beautifully in containers or in-ground in the warmer south, has specific anti-inflammatory and detoxifying properties valuable after toxic exposures. Fresh ginger root contains gingerol and shogol, compounds that protect against oxidative stress and support liver function during toxin processing. While ginger won't neutralize a specific poison, it helps the body manage the inflammatory cascade that often accompanies toxic exposures, whether from contaminated food, environmental chemicals, or medication side effects. For gardeners in the warmer zones, ginger is surprisingly easy to grow. Plant a piece of rhizome in rich, moist soil in partial shade, and by late summer, you'll have fresh ginger to harvest. In cooler climates, grow it in containers you can bring indoors before frost. You don't have to harvest the whole plant. You can dig around the edges and break off pieces while leaving the main plant to continue growing. Ginger also makes an excellent digestive aid and can help counteract nausea that sometimes accompanies mild poisoning. Do you grow your own ginger? Here's a plant that might surprise you because it's often dismissed as invasive. Dandelion, that cheerful yellow flower that blankets lawns every spring, is actually a powerhouse when it comes to supporting the body's natural detoxification systems. The roots support liver function, the leaves act as a potent diuretic to help flush toxins through the kidneys, and the flowers contain antioxidants that protect cells from damage. Research has shown that dandelion root extract can increase bile production by up to 40%, which is significant because bile is one of the primary ways your body eliminates fat-soluble toxins and heavy metals. 
the leaves contain more potassium than bananas, which is important because many diuretics deplete potassium, but dandelion actually replenishes it. You can harvest the young leaves in early spring for salads. They're slightly bitter, but packed with vitamins. The roots are best dug in fall, then you can roast them for a coffee-like beverage or make tinctures. Dandelions grow absolutely everywhere in the United States and require zero maintenance. The only trick is to harvest from areas that haven't been sprayed with chemicals. Have you ever eaten dandelion greens or are you still treating them as weeds to eliminate? Let's talk about something you probably associate more with the kitchen than the medicine cabinet. Garlic has been studied extensively for its ability to protect against heavy metal poisoning and chemical toxins. The sulfur compounds in garlic, particularly elicin, have been shown to bind with heavy metals like lead and mercury, helping the body eliminate them more efficiently. One study on workers exposed to lead found that garlic was as effective as a pharmaceutical chelating agent in reducing lead levels in the blood. Garlic also supports the liver's detoxification pathways. For gardeners, garlic is one of the easiest crops to grow. You plant individual cloves in fall, usually around October in most regions, and harvest full bulbs the following summer. It needs well-drained soil and full sun, but is incredibly low maintenance. Let your garlic cure properly after harvest by hanging the bulbs in a dry, ventilated area for three to four weeks, and they'll store for months. The fresher the garlic, the more potent the medicinal compounds, so homegrown always beats store-bought. Do you grow your own garlic? Now I want to share something that grows beautifully in the shadier parts of your garden. Cilantro has gained attention for its ability to help mobilize heavy metals from tissues. The leaves contain compounds that bind to mercury, lead, and aluminum, essentially collating them so the body can eliminate them more effectively. Studies have shown that regular consumption can reduce body burden over time. Cilantro grows quickly from seed and prefers cooler weather, making it perfect for spring and fall gardens. In hot climates, it bolts quickly, so succession planting every few weeks ensures a continuous harvest. Plant it in partial shade during summer heat for better leaf production. The key is consistent moisture and avoiding transplanting. It has a taproot that doesn't like disturbance, so direct seed where you want it to grow. Harvest leaves frequently to encourage bushiness. And if it does bolt, let it go to seed because those coriander seeds are fantastic in cooking. Does cilantro grow well in your garden or does it bolt too quickly in your climate? I saved one that truly surprised me for last and it's probably growing in your garden right now if you're into culinary herbs. Parsley, both the flat leaf and curly varieties, isn't just a garnish. It's loaded with compounds that support kidney function and help the body eliminate toxins through urine. Parsley contains high levels of apigenin and meristicin, flavonoids that have been shown to increase the production of glutathione, one of the body's most important antioxidants and detoxifiers. Glutathione binds to toxins in the liver and makes them water-soluble so they can be flushed out. Parsley also has mild diuretic properties that support kidney filtration without depleting essential minerals. For anyone dealing with chronic exposure to environmental pollutants, pesticides, or even just the chemical load of modern life, incorporating fresh parsley into your diet is a simple, effective strategy. Growing parsley is straightforward in most American climates. It's a biennial that produces abundant leaves the first year and goes to seed the second. It prefers full sun to partial shade and consistent moisture. One trick for germinating parsley seeds is to soak them overnight before planting because they can be slow to sprout. Harvest leaves from the outside of the plant, and it will keep producing all season long. Parsley also attracts beneficial insects like swallowtail butterfly caterpillars, so don't be surprised if you see those beautiful striped caterpillars munching on your plants. Fresh parsley has far more potency than dried, so snip what you need right before meals. Have you been growing parsley just for flavor, or did you know about its detoxifying benefits? So there you have it. 10 remarkable plants that aren't just beautiful or productive. They're backed by real science as nature's antidotes to various toxins, venoms, and poisons. From jewelweed's ability to neutralize poison ivy to milk thistle's liver protection against deadly mushroom toxins. From garlic's heavy metal collation to echinacea's immune support after venomous bites. 
these plants offer a level of protection and resilience that's both ancient and cutting edge. What strikes me most about these plants is how accessible they are. You don't need rare seeds from overseas or specialized growing conditions. Most of these are either already growing wild around your property or can be easily cultivated in a typical American garden. That's the beauty of working with plants that have co-evolved with us. They're adapted to our environments and ready to support us when we need them. Growing a medicinal garden isn't about replacing modern medicine. It's about adding layers of protection and self-sufficiency to your life. It's about understanding that the plants around you are chemical factories, producing compounds that have kept humans alive for millennia. Whether you're dealing with a bee sting and reach for plantain, worried about environmental toxin exposure and add cilantro to your meals, or want to support your liver health with dandelion tea, these plants offer tangible benefits that scientists are only beginning to fully understand. The research is there, the traditional knowledge is there, and the plants are waiting in your backyard. So here's my question for you. Which of these plants resonates most with your needs or growing conditions? Are you going to let that jewelweed grow wild by the shed, start harvesting dandelion roots this fall, or maybe finally plant that garlic bed you've been thinking about? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I genuinely love to hear which of these you're already using or plan to try. And if you found this deep dive into the science of plant medicine valuable, <laughs> Make sure you're subscribed so you catch the next one. There's so much more to explore when it comes to what plants can do for us. Thanks for spending this time with me today. And until next time, keep growing, keep learning, and keep discovering the incredible pharmacy that's right outside your door.